Despite the increasing demand for lithium ion batteries, which are poised to become the next big thing in battery storage space, the lead acid battery segment continues to hold the major share, accounting for around three fifths of the global rechargeable batteries market. In India, the continued growth of lead acid batteries is largely weighing to the increasing demand for inverters from tier 2 tier 3 cities as part of the country's rural electrification, as well as for energy storage solutions industrial applications. And while India continues to push for electric vehicles, the need for lead acid battery to provide for auxiliary power will continue to grow as lithium ion battery is only replacing the IC engine in electric vehicles and not the lead acid battery. All these factors are expected to propel the lead acid battery market at a rapid pace in the coming decade. Duramik, an Asahi Kase group company and one of the world's leading manufacturers of battery separators for automotive, industrial and specialty applications is looking to capitalize on this opportunity as they continue to expand their presence in India. Today we are joined by the representatives from Duramik to share more details on the company's future roadmap. So to uh, start with, Ayla, I have a question for you. How do you gauge your business opportunities in Indian market? So in uh, Indian market, it is uh, divided between automotive, inverter and e-rickshaws. So we, uh, we have actually a lot of experience globally selling to this kind of industries except for inverter. Inverter is unique in India. So we started this uh, manufacturing facility in Gujarat so that we can have a local made separator that we can sell to the local Indian battery manufacturers. So these manufacturers produce for different applications. This is how we go about the business in India. Okay, uh, John, very specific to your business. Uh, how do you look at the Indian market? As in your market, well, in the lead acid battery, it's uh, growing double digit, which is fantastic. And for Asahi Kase, I think there's some really good opportunities for us to grow with that market. Right. So, Chad, what are the major growth drivers for industry as well as your business? In India, from a perspective of, right, more people are driving cars in India. So the more people that drive cars in India, that means that the more, right, as people move up the economic uh, wealth ladder, that will have a higher demand for lead acid batteries. And with our business, the, the great thing about the lead acid battery business is that there's about four to five batteries per car at the end of its life cycle. So if a car lasts 15 or 16 years, it may go through three, four or five batteries. So 80% of our automotive sales are aftermarket. So it's a, it's a very stable, very good business. And the more the cars, the more people drive cars, the, the, the bigger the market gets. Now in India, we have also the inverter business, which is unique, but honestly is unique to India. And that continues to grow as, uh, as India continues to electrify, you know, tier two, tier three, tier three cities or even the rural, right? That, that although electrification doesn't mean electrification 24 hours a day. So we, we continue to see strong demand for the inverter business to provide backup power, right? Energy, right? Remember there's Somewhere in India, there's a there's a there's a boy or a girl that's studying by a light at night that's powered by an inverter battery with lead acid battery. Great. So, uh, Ayla, uh, if I have to ask you, you were there with uh, 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 Daramik, uh, I think since 2016 or so. So, uh, what kind of growth you have witnessed since uh, 2016? If you can let us know more. So, definitely for Daramik, I will say first, and then for the industry as a whole, I will say later. For Duramic, when I joined, uh, we just started this plant, Gujarat plant with just two lines. And uh, at that time, we invested around uh, more than 200 crores for the first two lines. And then we doubled our capacity by investing again. So the overall investment is more than 400 crores in India. So Duramic as a whole, you know, we have grown in India and we are able to manufacture in Gujarat and then supply to all battery manufacturers, major battery manufacturers in India. So this is a really remarkable growth for us and it continues to grow. This plan has allowed us to do so up up until 2017, right, all the polyethylene separators that were that were made that were used in India and batteries were imported in, right? And we had a, and we and we were very successful at using our, our US location and our Prochenberry location to import into India. With having the four lines here now in Gujarat, we can 
uh, the vast majority of our market domain can be supplied by Indian made product with a uh, local workforce here at uh, Gujarat. So we're very happy to have uh, to be operating local in order to uh, supply the needs of this, this uh, battery market. So for any plan to go beyond Gujarat? So actually, uh, we do have a finishing facility. It was established in 2013 in Himachal Pradesh, Badi Himachal Pradesh. And what we do is like, we, in the beginning, we used to import uh, big rolls from other countries and then finish it to smaller formats and then sell it to local battery manufacturers who do not have automation capabilities. And this uh, uh, segment is still growing in India. There are a lot of small and medium level manufacturers that need our finishing facility. So we set it up in 2030 and we see continuous growth since we set up and we, we may consider expanding if this growth continues. What are the other investments you made if you have to mention the CapEx? Uh... So um, that's a kind of very difficult to predict now. When the market is growing, we definitely will continue to invest. You have seen our past history that we see how the market is emerging. It is showing double digit growth and it is time for us to invest so that we benefit by investing as well as we support the local communities, right? Gujarat is on that list. Uh, but a lot, a lot of things change globally that would impact what was next investment. But we're, we're hopeful that we will continue to invest here. I just can't give you how much or when that's going to happen. Yeah. Sir, so at this particular time, uh, when the Indian government is giving a uh, boost to electric vehicle adoption, demand for lithium ion batteries is ever increasing. So we are kind of seeing a kind of uh, surge in the demand. So how do you see the market for lead acid battery, which is directly not being used in EVs, saving up from here? So now if you look at the automotive drive chains, continue to get more complicated. There's micro hybrids, there's mini hybrids, there's plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, there's, there's full EVs. But across that entire spectrum, those cars are still requiring a 12-volt architecture. So a lot of those architectures, the high-voltage motor drives are coming in with lithium, but there's still a lead-acid battery. And in some, in some instances, there's two or more lead-acid batteries to supply that 12-volt architecture. So we don't, we still don't see uh, lithium penetrating or impacting the lead in automotive, uh, in automotive that much. In other, in other applications, lead is economical. It's hundred, it's you know, ninety-eight percent recycled globally. Uh, so there, so lead has a cost competitive advantage in cell infrastructure versus lithium, and I think it's going to take a long time for the lithium supply chain to be completely up and running where it starts to impact the lead. Now, on the lithium side, we right. Being part of a side to say we have right, we also provide lithium separators. So Dramic is the lead acid battery side, but we have a sister company called Cellguard, and then we have our parent company owns a product line called Hypor that provides membranes into lithium batteries. So as India starts to develop and install a local lithium bat manufacturing base, we will also use our infrastructure here, our local team, local tech service, local finance and accounting local customer support or supply chain in order to also help the lifting side of the business grow. So, so although right today I'm wearing my ceramic hat, all right, so very positive on lead acid, lead acid, but I also have the Asai say hat that is very positive on lithium and we'll, and we'll be here to support lithium growth as well. The current regime, uh, the, in the government of India is giving lots of emphasis on uh, no, uh, in, uh, empowering or encouraging domestic manufacturing. They have started Make in India program, they are doing Atmanirva Bharat program. So uh, as a foreign uh, or a multinational company, when it comes to you know, ease of doing business, how do you rate India? Ease of doing business is a great term. We don't find any difficulty doing business in India. So we actually enjoy doing this business in India because we have access to top talent, talented workforce in India, especially in Gujarat uh, with my Make in India campaign. Almost everything is uh, very easy. You know, we got the permits very fast. We started uh, Gujarat groundbreaking and then within 14 months, we were able to up and run the facility. So I'll give you an example of what excellence looks like. So during COVID, we had the investment for the doubling the capacity before COVID. Then during COVID, all the equipment got shipped in and we couldn't, and none of the equipment suppliers were able to get to India. A lot of our local contractors couldn't get to the plant. So our local team here in Gujarat had to install and start up the equipment completely on their own. No global engineering support, nothing. And their uh, ingenuity in order to do that all by themselves is, is unbelievable. It was an absolutely wonderful feat. So, 
So we so operating in India is not a problem for us. And uh, this is my first trip here to India. Right. Just gave me the chance to meet the team here. And the team we had in India is world class. Uh, so before concluding, I won't take much of your time. Uh, Ahilaj, uh, John, as well as Chad, I have a question for three of you. That uh, now, would you like to talk about your long and short term objectives, individual objectives to achieve in Indian market as well as for the company? My my short term objective is to explain to the very top level of Sai Kase management how good our business is here. What I want to do is to to show top level Asahi Kase management how strong the team is and how we can use the dynamic infrastructure to grow other Asahi Kase businesses here. That's my personal goal. And long term, obviously, is get that growth here in the country with Asahi Kase. Okay. Now, mine is more going to be targeted on the membrane space, right? So we're, we're, right, we're going to be built out in dynamic here over the last 20 years. And now it's time for us to use our strength here to support our lithium side of the business to also help the market develop on lithium. So if you look at what we're doing, what I'm focused on is really you know, using the local team here to support the lithium side of the business to help India build out a lithium battery infrastructure. So my uh, take on this is keep an open mind for both short term and the long term. Goal. We have access to the entire global facility in Dynamic as well as with Asahi Kisai. Asahi Kisai makes thousands of products that can be mm -hmm. used in India. So enabling that, you know, by keeping an open mind and finding opportunities and connecting with our counterparts and bringing those technologies and products to India is going to be so exciting for us. That will put us on continuous trajectory of growth in India. Thank you so much, Ahila, Chad and John. Thanks for sharing the roadmap for Dynamic in Indian market. We wish that you continue to scale new height. With that, it's wrap on this episode of Mojo for Industry, Industry Unplugged. Please don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel and press the bell icon.